God is so, so, so good. God is so good. <laughs> Shut that book. Open the right one. Had a whole message planned this morning. Sitting in Sunday school with Sister Rena. My goodness, Lord. I mean, it's still going to be on the blood of Jesus. The Lord really got a hold of me. He said, I've got a different direction. I want you to go, Pastor. So I believe in following the leading of the Spirit of God. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. So we're going to be turning to Exodus chapter 11. Now this series is called The Blood-Bought Church. Now that gets me excited, just the title. The Blood-Bought Church. And uh, we're going to go with Exodus chapter 11. There won't be, I don't know if there'll be any PowerPoint, so Richard's back there and he was so willing to volunteer and help us, and now he just has to stare at me. So, brother, that gives you more opportunity to say amen. 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 Hallelujah. Thank you, brother. To God be all the glory. Exodus chapter 11. Somebody say amen. amen. We're just going to see where the Lord takes us. So if you'll follow along with me, beginning with verse number 1. And the Lord said unto Moses, Yet will I bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and upon Egypt. Afterwards he will let you go hence, and when he shall let you go, he shall surely thrust you out hence altogether. Let's pray. My Lord, my God, we need your anointing. We need your guidance. We need your spirit. We need inspiration from the Holy Ghost right now. And Lord, I ask that what you begin placing on me during the Sunday school lesson, that, Lord, you're going to allow me the opportunity to spread and to share with your people what you were saying. Oh, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on us now. Move within us now. Anoint us now, God. Fall like fresh oil pouring from the top of our heads to the soles of our feet. And, my God, I thank you that you are here with us today and that you have given us a clear vision and mission for the near future. In Jesus' holy name, and everyone said, Amen. Somebody turn to your neighbor and say, The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That's a phrase I could say over and over and over and over, and I believe the Holy Ghost would have church right along with me because there's something about the blood of of Jesus, the blood of Jesus. We see here in the story that Abram, I'm sorry, Moses was sent to Pharaoh. God gave him a specific word to share with the king of Egypt. And continue with verse 2. Speak now in the ears of the people and let every man borrow of his neighbor and every woman of her neighbor jewels of silver and jewels of gold. And the Lord gave the people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servant, and in the sight of the people. From what I gather of this scripture, when God sends you on a mission, he pays, whoo, glory, he pays the bill. Mm, you don't have to beg. And, and I'm, I'm just going to share something with you. I almost put this on Facebook and the Internet. I wasn't sure how to approach it. I'm wanting so strongly to get a big billboard i've talked to the people about the digital billboard they said 400 was the least said take as of now for a month so badly i want to put south side awakening on that billboard but i'm believing god's going to move on some people that are going to give toward that and say hey we're going to cover this month we're going to cover that month so I'm, I'm asking that you guys pray with me about how to approach this just so people will know there is a need and that the Lord's going to move on people because I believe as soon as people pull in across that bridge, they need to see Southside Awakening. <laughs> Amen. And, and, and when God's in it, he pays the bill. You don't have to get up in front of the church and beg and say, oh, please, I, I'm calling on you. I'm placing a, a, a huge burden on you. You need to give. I'm not going to do that because God's going to be the one that tells people what to give. And he will pay for it if it's his will. Amen. God will pay the bill when he, mm, Lord, I keep feeling the anointing. When he gives you a vision, he will pay for the bills. Amen. I've told this before, and it's not bragging. It's, it's bragging on God and on you. 
But ever since we opened this church, we've never went without being able to pay our bills. We've never had to have a chicken uh, spaghetti dinner just in order to pay the power bill. Never had to do it to God be the glory. Because the, the people of this church have seen that God is in this ministry. And they said, I want to sow into something that's real. And something where that God's moving. And because of this, every month we've always had every bill met. Every need's been met. When God's in something, he'll pay the bill. You see what else happened here with Moses, the Bible said, in verse 3. Moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt. In the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. Now, you know if you're great in the sight of your enemy's servants, God's, done, uh, God's up to something. You see, the enemy in our city and in our nation feels like that there are people who serve him and they're totally dedicated. But what's about to happen, God's going to put so much favor on you that when the, when the servants of the enemy see you coming, they're going to start taking notice. And they're going to say, well, we know we serve the lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, the pride of life. We know we enjoy our addictions. We enjoy living in our sin. But there's some favor I'm seeing on those people uh, that are children of the Most High. And, and even though I serve my master, I'm attracted to the one who is in you. That's what happens when favor is placed on the people of God. Those who think they have it all and they're enjoying the things of life become attracted to the one thing they don't have. And that is Jesus Christ and his peace that surpasses all understanding. So the Bible tells us here that he grew in favor with the Egyptians. And Moses said in verse 4, Thus saith the Lord. Here's a very important note. If you want to see a vision come to pass, you better speak what God says and not what you think. Mm. You can mess up a whole lot of people. You can just, there's folks that when God starts booming in a, a particular region, everybody wants to move to that city. There are certain cities right now people are doing that. Cleveland, Tennessee is one of them. I don't fault them for going there to be in a move of God. It doesn't bother me that they would want to be in a move of God. But what bothers me is they, they think that there's such a move of God in a certain city that God won't do it where they are. And instead of staying where they are and planting seeds of faith and of revival and Holy Ghost camp meeting, they go to where it, it's already happening. But see, the way God moves most of the time is he plants you in a certain area and he says whatever's happening in other places is because people who were planted Planted there stood the test of time. They were steadfast. They didn't up and run but just because things got rough or things looked greener on the other side of the fence. Amen. Revival and awakening comes when people who are planted in a region make up their minds I'm not a fire chaser. I'm not a count meeting uh, uh, one who's drawn to wherever God's just moving. I'm ready to see a move of God in my house. I'm ready for Holy Ghost count meeting in my church, wherever that may be. And that's the elements of awakening and the elements of a great move of God is don't go running after where God's moving. Allow God to start something right inside your own soul and let revival break out wherever you are. That's the way God wants to move. So we see that Moses spoke what the Lord said. You see, the only way God's going to back up what you say with power is when you're repeating what he's already spoken in his word. Amen. When he gives you revelation, when he gives you words of knowledge, and it's of him, he will back it up with his power. But we, we can get off sometimes on tangents and crazy theologies. And folks, I'm going to tell you, I have uh, sometimes that people approach me online or other ways, and they got crazy stuff they come up with. And I'm thinking, hey, let's just get back to Jesus. Amen. Can I get an amen? Let's just get back to Jesus. Amen. <clears throat> because he's the one who sets the captive free. Amen. But Moses spoke, thus saith the Lord. Here's what he told him. About midnight will I go out into the midst of Egypt, and all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die. Now that doesn't sound like very good news. If you wanted to approach a president or a king, you would hope that the news would be positive. But this was some of the most devastating news that anyone could ever bring to Pharaoh. I doubt that anyone had ever approached this powerful man with such devastating news. And he said, The firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die from the firstborn of Pharaoh, he named him, that sitteth upon his throne, even unto the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the meal, and all the firstborn of beasts. And there shall be a great cry throughout all the land of Egypt, such as there was none like it, 
nor shall be like it any more. Verse number 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue against man or beast, that you may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and the Israel. And, and Israel. I want to make a very important point right here. Listen closely to my words. It sounds like in that scripture that all the Hebrews have to do is sit in their recliner, sit, uh, prop up, watch their cable television, order Papa John's, while the plague is hitting all the Egyptians firstborn. We don't have to do anything because God just said that it's not going to touch us. That even the dog won't even bark against our families. Well, that was part of the prophecy, but there was a if to it. <laughs> if you do something, uh, th there was a requirement that had to take place. Some people, Brother Steve, are thinking that when the awakening in Southside begins, they're just going to be able to hop on board and float right along. They think, hey, uh, I'm just going to enjoy the ride. And, you know, there will be folks who come in after we've sowed the seeds of prayer and fasting, and they're going to enjoy the benefits and the fruit. But there will also be people who think they can just float along, not read their Bibles, not fast, not pray, not seek the Lord, and they're going to get slammed with an 18-wheeler of, of the biggest trial they've ever faced in their life. And they're going to say, my goodness, what happened and we're going to say because when an, a great awakening takes place, you must prepare yourself for spiritual warfare. That's part of this fasting we're about to start. One meal a day for the first 21 days of January. One meal per day. God's going to move on some of you to fast for days at a time where the, it'll be every meal of that day. When we fast... You can drink water. There's some folks who drink an insure, some type of drink if they need that nutrients. But we go without food. That's the kind of fasting that Pastor Michael's asking of the church. No, don't give up your little Debbies and Dr. Peppers. I'm asking that you, for one solid meal per day, would eat nothing at all. Not a cracker, nothing. And that during that time, you don't go and uh, watch a football game. You don't go watch basketball or some sport. You, f you get on your face, if, if physically able. You kneel. You spend time in the Word. You spend time praying and saying, God... I'm coming against every demon and devil that's coming against our church. I'm speaking against every demon that's trying to tear up my family. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus against sickness that's trying to hit our church. And you're going to pray over souls. Every soul in Southside, Alabama, we're claiming for salvation in 2015. Does that mean it'll happen in 2015? We don't know, but that's going to be a continual prayer over the entire city. Every soul will be saved in the name of Jesus. Well, that's the, some of the things that that I'm asking that we pray for during this 21-day fast. But here the Hebrews thought, man, we've got some great news here. Sounds like everything's going to go well. And then, chapter 12, go with me to verse 1. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months, and it shall be the first month of the year to you. Speak ye unto all the congregation of Israel, saying, In the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb, according to the house of their fathers, a lamb for an house. And if the household be too little for the lamb, let him and his neighbor next unto his house take it according to the number of souls, every man according to his eating. Shall make your count for the lamb. Now I would wonder with all of the stories that had passed down from Adam to, to, to the time of Moses, how many people would have taken note as soon as Moses spoke of the lamb, hey, that reminds me of Abel. That reminds me of a story where that Abel, according to the word of God, took the firstlings from his flock and offered it as a sacrifice. And you know, according to the word that had been passed down uh, that we would know of, that God accepted Abel's sacrifice, but he would not accept the sacrifice of Cain. Why is that? Because Cain brought up produce and fruit from a ground that was cursed. So it's hard to offer something that is a, that's a product of a curse in order to defeat a curse. Oh, can I get an amen? You see, God knew that the only way there would be remission of sin was through the shedding of blood. And that blood, uh, based on the story of Abel, was from a firstborn. We believe it to be a lamb. It says a firstling of the flock. And so all the way back we go and we see that God accepted the sacrifice of a firstborn lamb. And here's the thing that really stood out to me, though. 
Because you notice as soon as God accepted the blood of the lamb and rejected the produce from a cursed earth, that anger and jealousy begin to arise. Isn't that something? How that happens that Cain looked at his brother Abel not as a brother, not as someone who came from the same mother and father, but he looks at him as an enemy because he has, Abel has just shown up his brother Cain. What does Cain do? He allows jealousy to fester in him to a point where that sin stands at the door ready to devour him. And what happens? Sin literally takes over Cain and he approaches his brother, takes him to the place of the curse, takes him to the field, probably the very field where he grew up that uh, unacceptable sacrifice of fruit and vegetables. And in that same field of rejection, Cain slaughters his brother. He literally kills innocent life not for a sacrifice but because of jealousy and because of sin what does that tell us that when the blood is shed it stirs up the devil mm. when the children of the most high God begin claiming the blood of Jesus get ready for a devil or two or three or five thousand to get stirred up because the, it bothers them when people at New Haven and every other church begin declaring the blood of Jesus Christ you know why because the Bible told us in Revelation that we would overcome the devil by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony that tells me that when you start pleading the blood of Jesus it gets the devil's attention and it breaks down strongholds and it causes the walls that Sister Rena was talking about today to be hit with the wrecking ball of the blood of Jesus and honey let me give you a word from God today it is this that if you under the anointed power of his spirit will begin declaring the blood of Jesus he will tear down every stronghold within this city and within this church and within your household to God be all the glory I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost today let's give him praise thank you father for your anointing the Bible told us in uh, let's look here about Claiming the blood. Let's go to uh, uh, Exodus. We're still in chapter 12. And he said in verse 4, If the lamb, if the household be too little for the lamb. That's good news. Because that tells me that even the, from the richest to the poorest still have access to the lamb. Mm -hmm. He said, hey, if you got to depend on your neighbor, hook up with Susie and hook up with Johnny and hook up with whoever your neighbor is and say, hey, I'm not quite at a place where I can afford a, a lamb. Can we join together with our families and allow the blood that covers, mm, my God, allow the same blood that covers your house to cover my house. Oh, see, that's the beauty of serving Jesus. He didn't come just for the rich. He didn't just come for those with titles he came for every living soul for God said it's not my will that any should perish but that all should come to repentance so no matter what your social status or your level of wealth it does not matter to God because to all or to him all are worth his life every single person was worthy of his sacrifice so no matter where you stand financially all you need, mm, all, my God, all you need is the blood of Jesus. Let him and his neighbor next into his house take it according to the number of souls. I like that right there. And every man according to his eating shall make your count for the lamb. Verse number five from Exodus 12. Your lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year year ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats couldn't be just any lamb we know that had to be a firstborn lamb without spot and without blemish now listen closely when we approach the world with our message don't start coming mm, don't start coming up with some substitutionary lambs 
I'll start coming up with some theology that sounds like it gets close to the Word of God, but it's got more of Michael Knight in it than Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? Don't, don't start coming up with something that sounds good, and you, and you can get a shout, and everybody stands up and shouts, and says, oh, God's going to give you a brand new car and a new house and a million dollars if you'll just come to our church and get saved. Don't start preaching that garbage, because the focus is not on what you can receive in this world. The focus is on eternal life and a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now we can get all excited and shout the victory when somebody's power bill gets paid. Well, glory! I'm not sitting in a hot or cold house. I'm not uh, having to sit here and stare at a blank screen. To God be the glory, I've got my ESPN back. Woo, hallelujah. Some people think you're talking spiritual. My ESPN and, and my CNN and my Fox News. If Ben was here, he'd be playing the organ right now. But some of us get so attached to our electronics and things that we're, we're comfortable with. But, but what we we got to get back to is realizing we need to get more excited over Southside being saved from, from sin and darkness than we are over Alabama winning a national championship possibly this, this coming year. That's good stuff. I'd get excited if they won, but you know what? It does nothing for me compared to one soul coming back to Jesus that was on their way to hell. <laughs> Hallelujah! That'll get a shout out of me every time. I love when people are redeemed. By the blood of the Lamb. We're going to jump ahead. Same chapter, Exodus 12. We're going to verse 21. Then Moses called for all the elders of Israel and said unto them, Draw out and take you a lamb according to your families and kill the Passover. Let me talk for just a minute and then I'm going to move on here. There's some people who get so focused on ministry, on the move of the Holy Ghost, on a supernatural touch, on some calling on their life that they leave their families behind and they think they're supposed to win everybody else but their kids and their wife and their husband. Now, again, we can't save anybody, but you're still supposed to be a light to them and try to win them to God if they're not saved. Here, Moses specifically said under the unction of the Spirit of God, he said, according to your families. I like that because God's showing us how important little Johnny was. Of course, it'd probably been little Habakkuk back then, wouldn't it? Habakkuk. <laughs> oh, man, I, I could go somewhere with that. Don't you touch that tobacco, Habakkuk. Okay, so <laughs> anyway, there's no telling what his name was. Hezekiah. And then you probably had an oddball, Lulu. She's the outcast, Lulu. Nobody understood where that name came from. Anyway, it would be easy to leave behind family members because they don't, they don't sense a need for a south side awakening like I do. They don't feel the unction to go and talk to people in businesses and at schools like I do, so I'm just going to leave them behind. As a matter of fact, I'll pray for everybody else, but it's really not that big deal to speak the name of my, my spouse or my children or my parents out loud. Think about that for just a moment. How many times do we really pray, young people, for our parents? How many times do we speak their name and, and plead the blood of Jesus over their hearts and over their minds and we declare, oh yeah, it should be them praying for us, absolutely, but sometimes you've got to pray for them. Sometimes you've got to speak the name of Jesus and rebuke the demons that are trying to torment them with depression and with addictions that maybe you don't even know about, but God does. And you say, God, I don't understand why I'm praying this right now, but God says, don't worry about it. I don't even need to tell you what it is. You just need to break the stronghold and plead the blood of Jesus right now. That's the kind of intercession I'm speaking of that happens with an awakening where that you start doing what you weren't required to do when you were born. You were never supposed to carry mom and daddy, but sometimes God says, hey, mom and daddy ain't living the way they should, so right now I need you to carry them. I need you to speak my name over them. I need you to push back the devourer for my name's sake because you're just as blood-bought as any person 40, 50, 60, 70 years old. Amen, you've got that same power of the Holy Ghost within you. Moses spoke directly to the leaders of the home about their families. According to your families and kill the Passover. Verse 22, And you shall take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and strike the lintel and the two side posts with the blood that is in the basin. And none of you shall go out at the door of his house until morning. Verse number 23. 
For the Lord will pass through to smite the Egyptians, and when he seeth the blood upon the lintel, and on the two side posts, the Lord will pass over the door, and will not suffer the destroyer to come in unto your houses to smite you. Now this could get a little confusing. Some people could say, is this of God? Is this of the devil? Well, it was under the control of God. Whatever this spirit or angel was, it was under God's beckoning call, and it carried out what God said. But the same spirit that was going to wipe out the firstborn of the Egyptians was just as willing to wipe out the firstborn of the Hebrews. Do you know that? He would have done the exact same thing in Midian to the Hebrews, or, or Goshen, uh, to the Hebrews as he would to the Egyptians. Now, it's getting a little tricky here. Where are you going, Pastor? I want to tell you something right now. You better listen. With the vision that God has given us, there's going to be an onslaught. Now, don't get scared when I say this, but there's going to be an onslaught against Christ true Christians like we've never seen in our lives. There's going to be attacks through the government. There's going to be attacks through uh, certain masses of people who turn on Christians. There will be an onslaught in the spiritual realm that would be similar to what happened in the days of the Roman Empire. But just as much many attacks as are coming against us, here's the good news. Perfect love casts out all fear. Every time you're attacked, it's going to be an opportunity to bless his name, to praise him, to worship. It's going to be an opportunity to be a light to someone in darkness. And along the way of you being attacked, you are going to win souls to the kingdom who would have never been saved if, the, if, if you had not stepped into a place where you had to be attacked by the devil. Because of these people allowing the devil to use them to attack you, it's going to open them up to your witness. Mm. See, the devil don't know this, but God's setting him up again. He's thinking, man, I'm about to come against the church. I'm going to attack. New Haven Church of God thinks they're all big and bad with this south side awakening. And Pastor Michael's trying to get with all the pastors of the city. Well, who in the world does he think he is? Some little nobody with a church of about 50, 60 people talking to pastors that's running 800 to 1,000. Who in the world does he think he is? I'll tell you who I am. I'm a nobody, but I'm also a child of the king, and you're a child of the king, and that makes us royalty. Amen. You can either sit back the rest of your, my Lord, help me. You can sit back the rest of your life and say well I'm not able to do it I don't have the funds I'm not worthy I don't have the prestige or you can finally do what Moses did on the side of a mountain he had no prestige he didn't have much money but there was one thing he had and it was a call of God on his life God told him you're going to deliver my people and you tell them I am that I am has sent you honey if the great I am sends you I don't care where you came from I don't care if your mama and your daddy are devil worshippers I don't care if you shot up drugs three weeks ago if God God called you. The great I am can save you, sanctify you, fill you with the Holy Ghost, deliver you, and put you on a path to deliver others. You want this power that this preacher's got? Come on up and God will fill you too. Hallelujah. Some of you wouldn't expect in that. I tell you, he's my Lord. He's ready at any moment of the day to touch the people of God and to fill them with the power of the Holy Ghost. He's, let's go back here. When he's in Exodus chapter 12, he said he was going to pass through. But here's what was going to make the difference. He said, I've got to see the blood. If the blood's on the doorpost, then I will uh, tell that destroyer to pass over. I told my wife, I guess it's okay to say this. I told her a month ago when God gave me the vision for the awakening, and here's something for y'all to pray about. Not that, <laughs> Don't get the wrong idea. I told her, I said, honey, we're going to have to pray harder than we ever have for our marriage. I said, because the devil's about to hit us like he's never hit us before. We've had some rough times. Everybody does. But I said, because of what God stirred in me and how big it's going to be as far as saving thousands of souls, I said, we better fortify our house. So, preacher, what can we pray for? Pray for my family. Yeah. Amen. We're doing fine, but I'm saying in preparation, fortify your defenses. Yeah. Pr pray over us that God secures us and keeps us in the palm of his hand. Amen. Because it's, even though our God's big, that we're still human. Amen. You're still human. And I realize next week we're, we're just as liable to go half crazy. We could be up here shouting on Sunday, and by Thursday we about lost our minds. Amen. 
It's because we, we quit trusting in God the way we should because we can always walk steadfast. But sometimes humans do it. Sometimes we get in the flesh. We get ill. We get bothered by something stupid. It shouldn't even bother us. But that's where we just got to keep crucifying the flesh. The enemy wants to destroy families. I'll tell you exactly why. You get a person who's anointed. Colton ain't married yet, so I'll use him as an example. That way I won't be talking about his wife because he ain't married yet. <laughs> you can get him fired up in youth ministry working with the drama team. He's been married for 10 years. And all of a sudden some schism happens, some crazy thing of jealousy takes place. His wife starts causing all kinds of havoc and they end up divorcing and, and it crushes him and he thinks I'm not even worthy to stand up in front of youth anymore. Here I was, a married man, thought everything was going good and now I've lost, I lost out, lost respect. Might as well sit down on ministry. Do you see what can happen? If somebody in ministry goes through a devastating divorce or, or, or separation or, or, or maybe they stay together but they're miserable every day of their lives and, and it keeps affecting the ministry because of the misery back home. Think about that. See, that's why I'm telling you that, that even through Moses, God said, I am concerned about your families. See, it's not just about the head of the household and, oh, we're going to march out and we're going to see a Red Sea part and we're going to fight battles, do great things. Oh, that was part of it. But he said, the first thing I want you to do, man of God, is you cover your house with the blood of a spotless lamb. So what are we going to do, men of God? We've been meeting on Wednesday nights. If you've not been there, shame on you. Don't put us under condemnation, Pastor. Okay. If you work, I understand. If you don't work, I expect every man that attends this church a week from this Wednesday night, now this Wednesday will be at Safe Harbor, but a week from this Wednesday night to be in this class. We've been talking about becoming men of God. One of the aspects of that is this. You better get back to your house and start claiming the blood of Jesus over every room. If you got a garage, claim it over the garage. Walk your, your uh, land, your territory. Just speak in the name of Jesus, uh, four corners of your land. And say this place is off limits to the devil. Any confusion that the devil would try to cause in my house, I rebuke it now. Any lustful desires, I cast it down now. Any selfishness, pride, cheating, stealing, it, death itself, I cast it down in the name of Jesus. Anything that would try to bring confusion to my house, House, as the head of the house I plead the blood of Jesus over my territory and as for me and my house we will serve the Lord it's your God given duty as men of God to do what I just said to do and then we go to Exodus 12 verse 25 and it shall come to pass when you be come to the land which the Lord will give you according as he hath promised that ye shall keep this service. Now this is a message for the future. When God brings to pass what he's saying he's going to do, he's saying, don't you ever forget what got you here. Woo. Don't you ever forget that without that blood that went on your doorposts, you wouldn't even be standing here. You see, it wasn't the first generation that even took Canaan. <laughs> it was the children that grew up in the wilderness that took Canaan. You know what that means? Every child that grew up that was a firstborn son could only say I'm walking in Canaan land now because daddy put the blood on my doorpost. That's the only way any of that next generation ever, or the firstborn ever made it. We've got a generation of young people that are about to experience the greatest explosion of the power of the Holy Ghost that the planet has ever felt. There's a group called Planet Shakers, and I love that name because that's exactly what God is about to do through the youth of this generation. But you know what's got to happen? Those who are older than them need to start pleading the blood of Jesus over that generation. Sometimes you want to be careful how much you share because you don't want to embarrass anybody, but I went and met with, I'll just say a leader in Southside, because I've met with three key people, plus pastors. And when I went in this person's office dealing with talking about young people, this individual began to cry while I was in their office, and even got up and walked over to their desk and got tissue and, and tried to dry their eyes because... The, the Spirit of God was, was opening a door as I met with this person. 
and they were just sharing their soul with me. And I was thinking, you know, even from the very top, from a person I didn't even know before a few weeks ago, from the very top, God's already starting to move on key leaders in the city that are influential over children and teenagers. I'm saying if God's doing this in the office of the top person over these young people, then I know something huge is going on. And as I began speaking, to this person. It was like the Spirit of God filled the room. And before I left, I prayed. And I could feel the Holy Spirit moving. And I even prayed over that office for wisdom and discernment. And for, for strength and encouragement. But here's what I've come to tell you. The blood of Jesus Christ is going to be critical in what's about to happen. You know, pastors that are pastors of Pentecostal churches try to be so careful, especially with young people, because I realize you guys are very emotional. Well, we are too. Adults are too. But you get on real highs and real lows, extreme. And sometimes when the move of the Holy Ghost takes place, it almost sounds like the pastor's a downer because he'll go and meet with the youth pastor and say, hey, I want to make sure we stay Bible-based and we don't become fanatical wildfire kids. I don't want just to move the Holy Ghost, people shouting, speaking in tongues all the time because then you have what you had in 1 Corinthians where Paul had to address the church. Hey, just coming speaking in tongues all the time won't do it. you got to have some prophecy and some word and some teaching and preaching. So we, we're not getting on to any young people. We're just, I just talk to the youth pastor and I'll say, hey, I want to make sure where we are spiritually, how are things going? Are we staying on a word level? And you, he'll say, yes, sir. Yes, sir, we are. We're getting a lot of word. I'm like, well, hallelujah. See, it's our job to make sure we stay solid on the Word. And here's where I'm going. Be because so many people get caught up in wildfire and all they want is a move of the Holy Ghost and a shout. And I pray the Lord knocks me down in the service today. Well, it's awesome. But I want a combo package. I need the power with the Word. Amen. And that's why a lot of times I'll stand up and I'll preach after a dynamic move of the Spirit. If the Lord lets me, I, I go ahead and preach. Because it's the Word that keeps us, but the Spirit energizes us. The Spirit encourages us and emboldens us, amen, but the Word keeps you solid. As the Lord begins sweeping across the city with revival, and revival starts breaking out, even in other churches, we need to pray for our pastors for discernment, that God will give them the wisdom to know how to handle an outbreak of the Holy Ghost without killing it, but at the same time teaching the people this must accompany the Word of Almighty God. Amen. I've got to keep myself in check because there's times I'd just, just rather have a, a good old hold down, hallelujah, Holy Ghost shouting a fit and not even uh, stand up here and do what I'm supposed to as pastor. I, I just want to have a fit. And that's, you know, it's good at times, but there comes a point where I've got to get it together. I've got to have my shout on Saturday night. And when I get in here, I've got to be ready to lead. Amen. Amen. So if, if you teach a class, if every time you teach, you've got to have a move of the Holy Ghost and you want everybody on their face and, oh, I didn't even get to teach tonight, Pastor. That's not the will of God on a continued basis. I've told you before I had a pastor that told me we went eight weeks, brother, without preaching. I'm thinking, dear God, help your people. Y'all are in trouble. Amen. You must have the word of God. For those of you who are under the age of 21, I'm talking to you too because you're going to be the next generation to take over and you're going to need to lead a younger generation of children in what I'm planning in you today. The Word of God is the only thing that will keep you. The Spirit of God will move and manifest based on the Word. He will accompany the move of the Word, but He will never step over the Word. Amen? Won't do it. So you need to know the Word in order to know what to ask God for. Praise God Almighty. Never forget what got you to where you are. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ. Stand with me. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. Would you just say that with me? The blood of Jesus. The blood of of Jesus. So shall I never to Bushai. The blood of Jesus. Mm. It still reaches to the highest mountain. Yes, and it still flows yes. to the lowest valley. Yes, there is a city 
that we have been planted in that needs the blood of Jesus. There are some people who are so steeped in sin that they are at the point of walking out of their, their marriages, walking out from their children, which will, which will alter their child's thinking from that point on. No matter how much God does for them, it will alter the child's thinking because they'll always wonder, why, what did I do? To run daddy off? What did I do to mess up mom and daddy's relationship? Did he not love me enough? You got folks who are driven by addictions that are killing their bodies, that are destroying their minds, ruining their marriages. And it's only the blood of Jesus, mm, only the blood of Jesus that's going to be able to change a city. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Mm. Oh, God. Lord, I claim the blood of Jesus over this church, over their families, over this city. My God, I claim the blood of Jesus. Lord, we put it not just on the doorpost, we put it on our souls. And we speak it over those, Lord, who are in darkness, who must have light in order to live. God, there's so many people in need of you. Lord, I'm asking that you would open up doors. Lord, I'm praying that there be business owners, that you're going to set divine appointments. We're going to walk in the door of their store, and it's going to be the perfect moment. Lord, they're going to say, I needed to hear what you said to me today. You're going to put people on our hearts to go to, Lord, specifically to go talk to, and it's going to change the entire city. Thank you, Lord, for what you're doing in our schools. Oh, I plead the blood of Jesus over City Hall and over Southside High School and over Southside Elementary. Lord, I plead the blood of Jesus over every child, every teenager, Lord. And my God, I'm asking with all my heart that you show us specifically what we have to do to bring to pass this vision you've given me, Lord. Lord, provide the finances to pay for everything that I feel you want us to do, God. Send the money, Lord, to, to back us up and pay for everything we need to do. And Lord God, I'm ready to see a harvest, Lord, not just here, but every church. Lord, I'm asking you fill up this building and we finally are able to move to wherever you got planned for us to go from this storefront, Lord, whenever it's your will. Lord, fill this building up with people who are hungry for you and those who've been steadfast with us. God, bless them. And, and I pray you help them to get more on fire, Lord. Thank you for what you're going to accomplish through us. Most high God, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. If there's anyone today who needs special prayer, I feel the Lord moving right now. I feel the Lord moving right now. He's about to meet some needs. Whatever you need from God, we're going to agree with you, and God's about to meet some major needs in this congregation before we leave. Maybe financial. Maybe it's something you're struggling with. Maybe some doubt. Maybe it's something you need in your family. Whatever it is. Maybe you need some direction about some things. Oh, come on. Come on, church. Let God move on your behalf today. Anybody. I really need God to move in this situation today, Pastor. Mm, yeah, just come up, come up and stand there, brother. Anyone else? Anyone else? God, I need you to move. All right, church, let's come stand behind these. Pray the prayer of faith and let God move through you.